From car crashes to dead chickens to the fall of a government, anything can happen when a celeb dabbles in the occult, or at least that's what these A-list sorcerers seem to think. Most people might have been unaware that rapper Azalea Banks practiced brujeria, until in 2016 she posted a series of Instagram videos in which she complained about how difficult it was to clean up the blood of all the chickens she sacrificed. For obvious reasons, PETA was horrified by Banks' posts. Senior Vice President Lisa Lang said, We hope that Banks' closet cleanup is a sign that she's planning to clean up her act, become a good witch, and stop the cruel and gruesome sacrifice of frightened animals. Banks courted more controversy when she disinterred the body of her cat Lucifer before boiling it down to bones. The internet assumed that she was making a potion of some kind, but it soon turned out that she was moving and simply wanted to take his bones with her. To Sia, who publicly objected, Banks wrote an expletive-laden tweet in which she called the pop star pompous for disrespecting her traditional African religion. Banks has said that the religion was passed down in her family as her mother had practiced white table magic and prayed for protection from ancestors and saints. Banks told Broadly Meats that her favorite spell, used when someone is messing with her, is to rub an egg over her body and then crack it at a crossroads. In addition to being an actor, podcaster, and poet, Destiny Nicole Frascieri, aka Princess Nokia, is deeply involved with Regla de Ocha, a mixture of Yoruba religious practices, Roman Catholicism, and Spiritism. Frascieri herself has explained that this belief comes with mediumship, clairvoyance, and healing abilities. The video for Princess Nokia's 2016 track Brujas shows a number of witchcraft rituals cribbed from the movie The Craft, as well as the Yoruba spirituality of the African diaspora. Speaking to Cultured in 2019, Frascieri said that the next phase of Princess Nokia would focus more on being a bruja, a Latin American term for witch. She said, Everything I'm planning on putting out this year is based in this witch aesthetic of a goddess. Frascieri is also a believer in astrology. She once told them, Spirituality helped me focus on taking Princess Nokia to the next level, a mainstream artist who was still independent. In an interview with InStyle, Vanessa Hudgens once said, I was filming The Princess Switch 2 or 3 and I had my first conscious witchy awakening. I was learning about the history of the women who were wrongfully accused of witchcraft and learning about what witchcraft even is. Although she initially kept her beliefs private, Hudgens later filmed a documentary about witchcraft. Dead Hot follows her spiritual journey through Salem as she and a friend interview witches and mediums, experiment with Ouija boards, and learn about spirit boxes. In a 2023 interview with Today, Hudgens went on to say that she'd been dabbling in the occult for a long time explaining that she regularly saw a ghost in her former house. She said that she had used witchcraft to help manifest relationships, and that she had been the one to tell her ex-boyfriend Austin Butler that he should definitely play Elvis. Uh, uh. Hudgens said that the documentary helped her realize that many of these experiences came from her connection to the spiritual realm, and claimed that nurturing her beliefs had only made that connection stronger. She explained, I feel like I've been calling things ever since I was young. When I realized that as foresight, I was like, maybe I should learn how to hone into this. Anya Taylor-Joy once told Vanity Fair that she has always felt a connection to the spiritual realm. When the conversation turned to her ad campaign for Victor and Rolf Perfume, she said, I had a moment in the last two weeks where I stood back and said, if I were to pull a tarot card for this, which I did, it's the hermit. I just need to go into my own little velvet cave and put my head down and make this happen, you know? Taylor-Joy also insisted that it wasn't the witch that led her to witchcraft. It actually happened the other way around. She said, I'm such a big believer in cosmic destiny and putting one foot in front of the other, and my feet led me to that film. In a Spanish-language interview with Vogue, Taylor-Joy offered a look at what she always carried in her bag. Among her notebooks and books was a deck of tarot cards and some crystals. The tarot cards, she explained, were always a great icebreaker, while the crystals simply gave her comfort. She said, I love to hold them all in my hand. I sleep with them. I don't know. I love them. In 2017, news broke that a series of seemingly random dates tweeted by Lana Del Rey were connected to a movement called Find Trump, which was being promoted through a now-defunct Facebook page. The idea was that those in the know were going to conduct a massive sprawling ritual on the days in question, which coincided with a waning crescent moon. The end goal? Get then-President Donald Trump out of office. Del Rey later sat down for an interview with NME and confirmed that the tweet had definitely referenced an occult ritual. She added, I'm in line with Yoko Ono and John Lennon and the belief that there's a power to the vibration of a thought. Your thoughts are very powerful things and they become words, and words become actions, and actions lead to physical charges. Interestingly, there is some scientific basis to that. Studies have shown that words are powerful on a number of different levels, from increasing in-the-moment anxiety to being able to change the course of lives. Del Rey agrees, saying, I really do believe that words are one of the last forms of magic, and I'm a bit of a mystic at heart. Fans of the cult classic The Craft will be happy to know that one of the teenage witches is a real-life practitioner of tarot. I drink up my sisters, and I ask for the ability to not hate those who hate me. 
In an interview with Shondaland, Rachel True said that her fascination with the occult started when she was given her first tarot deck at the age of eight. She later told Days to that over the years she has taken comfort in the spiritual after feeling like a perpetual outsider. She says that she used crystals to manifest her role in the craft and explain just what it was about the tarot that had captured her imagination in the first place. True said, The idea that there were mysteries locked inside the images intrigued me, but I don't think I understood the deepest discoveries would be about my own subconscious desires. In the end, I'm a Scorpio and love a mystery, so tarot was a perfect fit. True has written a tarot guide and even designed her own deck, but stresses that tarot is limited as to what it can show. She said, I really do view it as a kind of therapist in a box. True explained that she found magic not in an innate ability for the cards to predict the future, but to reveal her own visceral subconscious. When Andy McDowell sat down with Vulture for an interview about the 1996 classic Michael, the conversation quickly turned to the supernatural. McDowell shared that she had started to believe in the spirit world because of her father, who had claimed he'd seen a ghost, and he was apparently the last person who would say something like that. She said that she had seen several ghosts during her own life, and had spent some time as a teenager visiting cemeteries and trying to talk to the dead. Did it work? McDowell seems to think so. In an interview with People magazine, McDowell said that she and her sisters used to communicate with their deceased uncle via a Ouija board. The Ouija board apparently made a number of predictions that came true over the years, including her career, her children, and her horses. McDowell also claimed that when they joined hands around the table, they could make the table walk. Are people right when they say that heavy metal music is infused with the power of the devil? In some cases, yes. In a 2011 interview with Music Radar, Dave Mustaine explained the reason that he refused to ever play The Conjuring live. The song's instructions for performing black magic rituals were very real, he said, and he didn't want to spread that sort of thing anymore. He said, I put a couple of spells on people when I was a teenager and it haunted me forever, and I've had so much torment. While Mustaine has since become a born-again Christian, he has gone into some detail about his experiences with witchcraft. In an interview on the Joe Rogan Experience, he shared the stories of two hexes that he claimed had very real-world consequences. In one, Mustaine said that he had cast a so-called sex hex to get the attention of a girl he liked, and that it absolutely worked. For the other, he said that he had targeted a classmate who had made it clear he was going to be Mustaine's relentless bully for the foreseeable future. That one worked too, he claimed, saying that he had made a doll that represented his bully, who was injured in a crash soon after. Mustaine said that he was led down the black magic path after seeing his sister practicing white magic, and that he is now quite content to not have anything more to do with it. Paganism, witchcraft, and the occult was once a way of life for Huntress lead singer Jill Janis, who died in 2018. She once told Louder Sound that it all began because she had grown up on a farm. She said, I was very open to nature worship and seeing all these amazing aspects of paganism come into play in my daily life mostly the power of visualization, seeing it, believing it, and obtaining it. Janice was a young teenager when she found her first coven, and she stressed that although she had seen the damage that black magic could do, that was absolutely never her thing. She explained, I've stood at the edge of black magic and I've seen the darkness envelop people, and it's sad, really. You see negativity root within a person like an evil tree. There's a lot of danger lurking within the corners of witchcraft, so you really have to be strong and truthful, and you really have to protect yourself. It makes sense, then, that many of Huntress's songs were rooted in very real practices. She explained to Loudwire that their references to numerology, alchemy, and the casting of spells are all very real. She even credited her band to her beliefs, saying that she had imagined it, willed it, and it happened. Janice said, People can say white witch, but you know, I'm just a witch. I'm a little witch that loves heavy metal. It's no coincidence that Heather Graham's pet project was the story of a woman who feels underestimated and ostracized by men, and finds comfort in a circle of female friends who practice witchcraft. Graham told Well and Good that some of the scenes in the 2018 movie Half Magic were based on her real-life experiences with the supernatural. Graham said, We had dance parties and did things like call upon the elements. One night, we were calling on the elements on my friend's rooftop and a storm broke out. Graham said that the whole affair started when she attended a female empowerment class and became friends with other attendees, who also happened to be interested in witchcraft. She said that witchcraft has been wildly rewarding and taught her about self-worth, self-love, self-esteem, and gratitude, and that it gave her more confidence to stand up for herself in the cutthroat world of Hollywood. That said, Graham has also been quick to stress that her experience with the occult hasn't been about manipulating the outside world, but rather finding something within herself. She told the New York Times, As a woman, sometimes I feel disempowered in this society. To be a witch seems to me to be the opposite of that. I think we as women are much more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. For us to see the power we have is the next step. 